Hi, I'm Roland Sally, and I'm talking with David Ward today on the record, musicians on the record. I'm out in California, he's in Maine, so here's a little thing. If I was in San Diego and you was in Portland, Maine, I'd fly to you like stock and bone through hail and falling rain. Over the mountains and down in the valley, just trying to get to each other. Don't take us but a few minutes to get to one another. Your song, Killing the Blues, won a Grammy when Robert Plant and Alison Krauss did a cover of that, and a bunch of other folks have done a cover. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, I want to make sure that you also won the Grammy for that as well, right? I do. It's, uh, it's, it's not in the picture. It's hanging on my wall just around the corner there. Uh, I did win a one, uh, wins a Grammy when... Uh, the song he's written is is you know elected to win win the award and uh, no matter who sings it uh, the songwriter likewise gets the uh, gets the you know accolade or whatever you want to call it but it was really nice to get it and Allison Krauss and Robert Plant did a great job on that song unusual I never intended to be a two part harmony song but man they really nailed it. Yeah, they really did. Amazing version. Plus, Sean Colvin has done it. Oh, so Sean Colvin. I mean, it, that's my personal favorite is Sean's version of it. She, uh, she just, when I heard that, I just I fell down. <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a haunting song, Roland. And when I heard, I, I listened to the whole bunch of versions of it, including yours, which is great. I, I heard a little bit of Dylan in there. Uh, can, you, can you talk about the story about the song and what's the story behind it? Well, you know, so I, I, I would refer to it as an authentic song because it's actually um, um, autobiographical, I guess I have to say. It. Uh, it's, you know, it's a song about, about a personal situation and we, we you know, we get, we get fuel from those for songwriting and uh there was someone i was with at the time and uh we we had agreed to to well frankly just say clean up our act and uh so i i did it and she uh she slipped and we uh we just um it was it was a it was a fork in the road and we came to that fork in the road and i took it <laughs> right and um uh it was just uh it was it was it was a tough tough situation, and I woke up one morning. I was feeling so bad about it in my new little you know apartment up in Woodstock, New York, and uh, made myself a cup of coffee. And that song kind of fell out on the table. Maybe it took maybe about nine minutes. <laughs> wow, amazing! When when did you write that song, Roland? It was a long time ago, back in in, in the mid seventies. Yeah, yeah. And so you have been around a long time. <laughs> Thankfully, right? Thankfully, yeah. And so you wrote it and recorded it. Did you have any idea or, or no, that wasn't the story of it? I had a good friend at the time in Woodstock named Jim Collier, who isn't with us anymore, but he's a fabulous songwriter, great singer. And we were just so, so close and together. We would sing, we had a little band going, and we were really great friends. And um, there was kind of this thing where, where, when, where he'd write a song and bring it in and we'd, we'd look at it together and then I'd write one and bring it in. And it was kind of this thing where we were kind of a team, you know? And, and when we wrote, when, that particular song, when I wrote it, I finished it and I thought, I'm going to sing this for Collier because I think he'll understand for sure because he knows me, he'll understand where the song is coming from and everything and I hope he likes it. But, you know, when you write a song uh, like that and it, you, don't, you don't belabor it too much, um, sometimes, you're not sure if you've really written anything worthy or a good song or anything that'll stand up. It just comes so quick and you kind of, so I put that away and said, I'll sing this tomorrow and see uh, if, if it holds water in the morning. So the next day I kind of pulled out my guitar and ran it down and it sounded okay to me. So I played it for Jim and then I played it for another friend of mine named Johnny Harold from the Bluegrass Boys back in, back in the, in the village days. And he looked at me and he said, that song, it's going to go somewhere. He goes, I'll bet you $100 right now that song will do something. And I shook on it. And so years and years later, I sent him $100. Yeah. <laughs> he won the bet, right? Thankfully. Right? <laughs> you yeah. you got to pay up. 
You bet. You bet. And I mean, I, I, I don't imagine you had any idea what life that song would take on of its own with these amazing other artists like yourself yeah. playing it. You, you never do. Um, uh, sometimes if you write lyrics that are, that are pertinent to a certain time or certain, certain events that are going on, like in a, in a given time, like really specific, the song may turn out to be more of a, as a, of a specific time related song, but then other lyrics seem to sort of apply in general at any time. And if you're lucky, you can get a song you know, where you subtract it out enough of the, uh, you know, the current stuff and you, you get a broad meaning that, that sort of pertains to people in general and situations that people are going to be coming into throughout the history of mankind. You, you're lucky to get a song that will, you know, that will stand up over time. But you don't, you don't really know. 